Hi guys, Robo46 here. Now, today, Jorge Lorenzo sadly announced that he will be retiring at the end of the 2019 season. He will not be taking part in 2020 and will not be doing his second year with Repsol Honda. He put out an, an announcement earlier today for a press conference and then announced in that press conference that he will be retiring from uh, being a professional motorcycle racer at the end of the season. So he will be doing Valencia, the final race of the season, which is this weekend. And then after this weekend, he will no longer be racing in the paddock, which is such a shame. Love him or hate him. Jorge Lorenzo, you can't deny he is a fantastic rider. So we'll be doing two races today. So the first one will be at Laguna Seca aboard uh, a Yamaha. Jorge had uh, good fortunes with Yamaha. So he has won five world champions altogether. The 2006 and 2007 250 World Championships. And he also won the 2010, 2012 and 2015 MotoGP World Championships. So a fantastic rider. He had his uh, success at Yamaha with uh, three championships with them. And uh, obviously his 250 championships were both with Aprilia. And uh, he made the switch to Ducati uh, a couple of seasons ago. And it took him a little while to adapt, but um, eventually he uh, managed to, to win some races. And then he announced uh, that he was switching to Repsol Honda for 2019. And uh, unfortunately for him, it has not been a great season. He didn't do too badly during testing, but that was on the 2018 Honda. And uh, he's even said that he had more confidence with the 2018 spec Honda than the 2019. Um, so yeah, he uh, he was looking good on it to begin with, but then when it came down to it, um, he had quite a few crashes, some nasty, nasty injuries, which as a result was uh, the main reason he decided that he's going to retire because of the, the injuries and the fact that he just doesn't find it natural on the Honda. I personally thought he was going to eventually click with a bike. Uh, especially considering it took him a little while to click with the Ducati but once he did he was able to win races but unfortunately he's struggled to even get inside the top 10 this season so sadly Jorge Lorenzo will be retiring at the end of this season it is sad to see someone um, go go from winning races to you know mid-pack to back of the grid so uh, the thing is you don't lose it overnight so you, you can be sure that he's still really really fast it's just unfortunately he does not get on with that Honda and he's decided that is enough is enough now with him obviously departing Honda that does leave a space available alongside Marquez for next season so the video that I put up yesterday at time of recording is now redundant because uh, yeah yesterday I said in the video that Jorge Lorenzo would be staying at Honda for this season, but that was obviously before he announced he was retiring. So yeah, there is a, a vacant seat at Repsol Honda. Who is going to fill that? Well, there's kind of two options really, but there's one that's more obvious than the other. I mean, there may be some uh, other options as well, but the two that stick out are Johan Zarco and Nakagami. Now, we'll go with the, the lesser one first, Nakagami moving across from LCR Honda. Now, we know that Zarco has replaced uh, Nakagami for the final three rounds of this season. And he's actually done pretty good on that Honda. Now, that is the 2018 spec Honda. And uh, he's been doing pretty well. He did, unfortunately, get taken out by Mir at the last race. But he, he was uh, in a good position. He will be racing again this weekend as well. Um, so, you know, Nakagami, he's sponsored by Red Bull, so he could potentially move across to Repsol Honda and then maybe Zarco take his place at uh, the Indomitsu LCR Honda. I mean, obviously he's ridden for them. He would have done three races for them already. However, you know, Zarco was approached by Repsol Honda a few seasons ago um, before he decided to go with KTM because he 
one of his reasons was he wanted to beat Marquez but with a different bike um, and obviously his stint at KTM did not go so well and obviously his season came to a premature end when both him and KTM decided to part ways so you know it, it wouldn't surprise me if Repsol Honda you know open that door again and try to get Zarco to uh, to ride for them for 2020 and uh, it kind of seems the most uh, obvious option for them we know Zarco's really quick it's just whether he can go quick on the not the 2019 race, Honda but the 2020 Honda ball, next ball, ball, season ball, depends ball, obviously ball, the how race. the development of the Honda for next season goes will it be a little bit more user friendly or will uh, Marquez be the only one who can still ride it but yeah so you know we, we don't know anything like concrete the at the path. moment at time of recording nothing has been announced but um, yeah we will be getting something shortly I'd imagine especially considering it is of course the end of the 2019 season so they're gonna need to fill that seat pretty quick because uh, pre-season testing will be happening you know not long after the final race so Zarco will be there obviously racing for LCR Honda so yeah it, it really wouldn't surprise me if um, Zarco gets announced to replace Lorenzo for 2020 it will probably be a one-year contract to begin with just to see how he gets on and then obviously they'll decide what to do at the end of 2020 but yeah it could be uh, interesting especially if Zarco does click with the, the new Honda it would be good to see him you know go from you know back of the pack on the, the Red Bull KTM to at the front on the Repsol Honda because we know Zarco's quick we know he's a fantastic rider so yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens um, with that other Repsol Honda seat. And uh, yeah, it, it would make more sense to put Zarko there rather than Nakagami because then they have to move Nakagami across. And then they've got to fill Nakagami's seat rather than just keep Nakagami. There he is on the screen. Speak of the devil. Um, and yeah, just put Zarko at Repsol. They don't have to move Nakagami. So yeah. It was a, a little bit of a shock, you know, part of me was, was still shocked even though, you know, we could kind of see something was going to happen, whether it was Honda was going to just, you know, split their their, their ways with, with Lorenzo because he has had a disappointing season or whether ultimately he was going to retire because when he was at Ducati and he was kind of stuck in a rut there and not getting great results. He thought about retirement then and uh, he went into uh, said about his, his mental state when he was at Ducati. Um, it, it, it dropped quite a bit and uh, he really considered retiring. So now, you know, he managed to pick himself up. He managed to, to win a few races and then sign for Honda. That, and that was new motivation for him. But yeah, it just hasn't worked this season, unfortunately. And... Uh, it, it is sad to see um, someone as talented as Lorenzo retire. And uh, yeah, I just uh, wish him all the luck for his future. Now, it, it would be good um, if he kind of done something similar to what Danny Pedrosa had done when he retired at the end of the last season. Um, a little while after announcing retirement, he then signed as a test rider for KTM. Um, Yamaha get hold of Lorenzo again see if he wants to be your test rider because uh, let's face it ever since uh, Lorenzo left after 2015 that Yamaha has uh, slowly be get, been getting worse and worse every season so uh, yeah get Lorenzo back as a test rider and uh, hopefully he can try and sort that bike out and make it more competitive and more consistent again but of course he may not want to do that it also depends what Honda decide for him as well because obviously technically he'll still be under Honda contracts so though they might might not allow him to to test for Yamaha um, but yeah it, it, it would it would benefit both you know maybe occasionally give him a, a, a wild card if he wants one um, 
I know it's obviously a lot of paperwork and that and uh, you know should anything happen to any of the other riders and hopefully it doesn't uh, he could obviously stand in on races as well but uh, you know he might may find that if he does start testing for Yamaha that you know he kind of feels more more back at home with a bike that albeit like slightly different to when he last rode it in 2015 he might feel like putting on a a nice pair of comfy slippers when you get home after a long long day at work and it might kind of you know relight that fire again but we'll have to wait and see um but yeah if if i was yamaha if i was you know the whole yamaha um then yeah i would definitely be knocking on lorenzo's door because obviously yamaha did offer zarko a testing role and then zarko went and uh, rode for honda the three rounds uh, the end of the season and then uh, Yamaha decided to close their door to him so that obviously there is an option there for a test ride for Yamaha so you know why not offer it to Lorenzo but like I said it obviously does depend you know Honda may not allow that until he's completely out of contract um, but yeah, it is uh, very interesting times at the moment. I'm sure we're going to get some news like very, very soon, if not already, when this video goes up about who's going to be replacing Jorge Lorenzo for 2020. And like I said, it would not surprise me if it was uh, Johan Zarco. So yeah, it's uh, been a good career for Lorenzo. He's had a lot of wins. He's had some very nasty crashes. Obviously, he's had quite a few this season. He had a few last season. Obviously, that nasty one he had in uh, Aston in the wet a few years ago as well. But uh, he is ultimately a, uh, a fantastic rider. A really, really quick rider. A five-time world champion. And it will be sad to see him stop racing um, at the end of the race on Sunday. But yeah, Yamaha, get hold of him. See if he wants to be a test rider for you. <laughs> so yeah, Jorge Lorenzo will be retiring at the end of this current season, 2019. Such a shame, but you know, ultimately it's his decision. And uh, like I said before, I wish him all the, the best for the future. I'm sure he will still you know have a hand in in some sort of racing or management at some point in the future whether he you know ends up trying to you know bring younger riders through or maybe try and set up his own team or something who knows i i, I know he's going to retire but i don't think he's going to completely remove himself from from the paddock completely so you know you might see him occasionally he might start managing, you know, some, some younger riders like some of the, the GP riders do. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But enjoy retirement, Jorge. And, uh, yeah, let's start lap five with him on the Honda. Catalonia this season was, uh, you know, it, it was the, the place where we kind of almost saw the, the old Jorge. He was able to run at the front for a little while. Um, or a few laps anyway and he was looking good pretty much all weekend and then unfortunately he had that incident which uh, we'll be getting to the corner soon um, yeah he was uh, tussling at the front trying to uh, to get to the front and hopefully he was uh, thinking about hopefully winning his first race on the Honda but uh, yeah unfortunately it all turned uh, into a disaster so, going up the hill was absolutely fine. Coming out of the next corner was absolutely fine. But it was going into that horrible turn 10. He uh, unfortunately lost the front and took out Davizioso, Vinales and Rossi all at the same time. And uh, yeah, that was the end of that race. Obviously, he took himself out of the race as well so four into one but uh yeah that that was uh you know really the, the only time we've seen jorge competitive on the honda 
and uh, he was suffering with the, the front end feel and it's something that a lot of the, the Honda riders are moaning about and uh, yeah just uh, goes to show that you know if you haven't got confidence in the front then uh, it's quite easy to, for it to just wash away so Honda for me at the moment kind of reminiscent of Ducati when Stoner was there you know Stoner was the only one that was competitive on the Ducati and could ride it really well a bit like Marquez at uh, uh, Honda he's uh, the only one that can can ride the Honda the way it needs to be ridden Lorenzo is uh, known as a very very smooth rider hence why he suited the the Yamaha down to a T it was a uh, Good to watch him race on the Yamaha. And, uh, eventually sorted out the Ducati as well and got competitive on that. But, you know, he'd already announced his uh, move to Honda before he won his first race at uh, Mugello with Ducati. So, yeah, we're coming to the end of this race. And unfortunately... We're coming to the end of Jorge Lorenzo's MotoGP career. One race to go for Jorge Lorenzo. That is this weekend at Valencia. He will line up for the final time in the MotoGP paddock. So a few things still to sort out. But like I said, the next week or so, the next few days, we may get something concrete about who's going to be replacing him. My money's on Zarco. But yeah, Yamaha get Lorenzo as a test rider I'm sure he would be a great asset to trying to get that Yamaha a bit more competitive Before going to the podium awards so there we go guys that is the final it final from me I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave it a like if you did subscribe to my channel for more content I should see you guys in the next video this see you has been able to impose a frantic pace on today's race and now he and his mechanics are rightly going to party It was a very hard weekend, but Lorenzo's efforts have been repaid. A great victory for a great Lorenzo.